Okay, a little bit of a departure here from uh, doing some scenes, nature scenes. This butterfly here is a image out of the symmetry line of the Stampscapes line of stamps. Um, I don't know, these butterfly stamps, as I mentioned in this video, were done for a t-shirt designed for a stamp convention, except the middle of this little butterfly here was a kind of like one of those old stamps that you know came up here, but I liked the design a lot, so I kind of redid the center here to kind of release as my own image, and I wanted to use it in a card. So I just stamped this one out. It's a fairly simplistic application of this design. I just stamped this image out in um, white ink. It's a white color box ink onto a matte black paper. And I've gone into it. It stamped out kind of in a 70%. It wasn't really super light, okay? So I've taken my bleed proof white uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, um, opaque white watercolor paint, and I've applied it with kind of a thin brush into certain areas within here. That's where you get this kind of variation, this kind of, I don't know, kind of decorative little flourishes done with this paintbrush application of this uh, type of paint right here. And uh, this set right here, the symmetry set number three, I think, it comes with those little flourishes like that. Now, what I've done is I've applied these flourishes around on this matte paper in the background. Applied a little bit of a vignette, actually I did the vignette first, okay, in terms of uh, sponging on some colors in the background. It's very similar to, or the exact same way I do it with um, scene stamping, you know, putting the, you know, kind of uh, darker edge type of effect around on the corners like that, and then I stamped in these little flourishes like that. And very much the same as we do with uh, a lot of scene stamping, you know, when I use the uh, uh, mainly gel pen, uh, white gel pen uh, marks. In one of the recent scenes that I did, I applied some of those um, little highlights with the, the paintbrush and again the bleed proof white. And I've added in these little white flourishes in here in the background, just for a little bit of a subtle change and to kind of reiterate this idea of kind of interior lighting coming from really the back of this right here. So I've kind of lit these and that's kind of the last thing I did. So if you want to kind of fast forward ahead at something like that, you can do that. But um, anyways, um, this set, uh, was just sitting right next to my stamp table. I don't know what I was um, doing with it. Uh, maybe I was moving some stamp sets around. But anyways, I just felt like doing something with it. I'll need to clean these stamps up. This one's the larger one right here that I did. You can see this in my inks on it to be cleaned up later, but um, fun little card. I'll put the different sizes of all of these different paper components in the uh, uh, the details, the uh, section down below this video. So you just click on the show more and it'll take you to the little uh, description section and I'll get into uh, the different papers that I use. But again, it's just a simplistic type of application of these stamps right here. And I just tried to make it, I don't know, it's it's kind of out of my, you know, specialty, you know, of scenic stamping, but I just tried to create something kind of as elegant as I could using a lot of the techniques that I use in the scenic stamping um, scenes when I use dye-based inks on glossy paper. Okay, I've been experimenting around a little bit with some different papers, and this is kind of a culmination of that or an ongoing exploration of that type of idea. But I'm getting a lot of ideas from this type of usage of things like this and paint brushes, you know, for my other work that I'll get to. I seem to be kind of in this kind of exploration phase right now. But um, as I mentioned in this video at the tail end of it, these little flourishes and this little dry brush kind of applications of that paint in there kind of would be interesting on like highlights on rocks or something like that or on trees or having a little bit of a flare coming out uh, from like the middle of the sun in a in a uh, you know scenic stamping piece so 
Anyways, uh, always learning all the time, or trying to, and uh, we'll try to see if we can take some of the uh, the ideas that we use in scenic stamping, apply it in this, and learn different things on this, and apply it back to um, some scene stamping. So, anyways, this is a fun little card. Well, it's actually a big card. This is actually an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper that this is on. So, fairly large. Um, I don't know, card here, but um, it was a lot of fun to do. Okay, so anyways, if you choose to watch this video, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, always drop us a note in the comments section below. Okay, um, fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Okay, I was about to sit down and kind of figure out uh, what I wanted to stamp out today, and there was my symmetry sheet number three, I think it is. It's the butterfly sheet. And no, not really a scenic stamping uh, set, although you could do a scene out of something like this. It would be, I don't know, very whimsical, and you better bet that the butterfly would be the focal point of the uh, scene, but um, I, I don't know, I just felt like doing something with it. I haven't stamped anything with it in quite some time, and I don't remember the last time I used it. Um, I don't know if I used it in a, maybe a stamp board video before, but um, anyways, I thought I would do something with it using um, kind of that negative space type of uh, Maybe not negative space, but negative mark, you know, where it's something light on dark, you know, something that I uh, experimented a little bit with um, in one of the more recent videos, and uh, just kind of wanted to play around with that a little bit. I love reverse marks, uh, you know, um, white lettering on kind of dark or black uh, backgrounds, and... Um, I don't do too much of it uh, in terms of things like scenic stamping. I should play around with it a little bit more uh, just for the heck of it, but um, I don't know. Let's try something here and see what we can come up with. Okay, this is a butterfly um, design that I did um, for a t-shirt design, and it was for a design for um, I think it, I don't remember which convention it was, probably around the 18th or something, or not 8th, or I, I can't remember what convention it was for, uh, the Carson stamp convention, but, uh, but it was around there. Okay, so we have a reverse mark. It looks pretty good. Um, I'd say the detail held surprisingly well um, in that very thick color box frost white paint. It didn't stamp out uh, entirely opaque, but that's okay. It's a little bit more translucent where we have, I don't know if this was white right here and black is uh, black, you'd get probably that would be, I don't know, what would you say, around a 50 or 60 percent uh, gray, it looks like. So we'll just go with that, but I don't know if you can see the details here, but um, those little details in there held up surprisingly well. Might be kind of interesting to take that and, and this is in pigment ink, but we can sprinkle on detailed embossing powder or something like that and emboss it. But I'm not going to do that right here, so. Anyways, so we have that element in here, and I thought I would play around with a little bit of the, uh, well, or with some of the uh, the other elements. I have these little, I, I forgot what these were called or people referred to them as. Uh, these little kind of flourishes came out. I started seeing these uh, a lot, maybe, I don't know, the 2000s or something like that. Um, I, I don't know, I just called them flourishes. I, I kind of did these similar types of things back in uh, my college days when we were studying um, some different periods of art, and one of the periods that I chose was Art Nouveau, and we had to come up with a figure that incorporates several different um, 
like four different periods of art in one little uh, figure, like a puppet or something, you know, it'd be like a person, but so I think I made uh, my wings um, were the Art Nouveau, and that's where I came up with the, I don't know, the wings for this butterfly right here. Kind of with that same idea. But anyways, I thought I would do these flourishes on this paper right here. This is going to be, this is how, I'll put the dimensions for the, this, uh, these papers um, in the uh, description below. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Okay. And then this will be mounted on a card like so. Okay, so I'll try to come up with something reasonably elegant. Uh, it's not really my forte in terms of uh, kind of non-scenic types of uh, things, but we'll try to incorporate a lot of the similar um, types of elements that I would do in scenic stamping, okay? So uh, first one, things that I'm going to do is I will kind of make, oh, I mean, it's not going to be too much of a focal point, but, you know, this is going to be the subject matter, you know, this butterfly in the center of the uh, card. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be a, uh, a mat, but there are certain things that we can do with the mat to kind of bring the viewer's attention into the scene a little bit more. Okay, now this is a um, kind of a pearlescent type of paper right here. So it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Okay, and I'm just going on straight with dye-based black ink. You can use whatever brand, uh, you know, is your favorite. Uh, and something like this, you want you wouldn't want to go with something like a uh, you know, like a stays on or something like a permanent ink, okay? I want this to spread and blend very easy, okay? I am using a very light touch with the sponge applicator. Okay, this is the stylus tool, color box stylus tool. And any of these types of tools, you can get more information on our website, um, or you can just look it up online. Uh, and you'll find uh, different uh, places that sell it. If you can't find anything, anything online, we also have it on our website. There's very few accessories that I really carry. Uh, the types of things that I used to carry in terms of stamp pads, which I really don't anymore, but um, they were the things that I really liked using and basically couldn't live without that were kind of not um, terribly easy to find in terms of the numbers of people carrying it. Uh, I, th I, th I think these applicators are a little bit more popular now, but when they first came out, they were kind of designed to be used for their shape, you know, and there weren't too many people doing oval shapes, okay? But it's just a convenient kind of sponge on a stick type of applicator. It's very comfortable in my hand. It's like holding a pencil or pen. And the way that I use it is with a very light touch. And most places, you know, in most instances, I'm doing it on glossy cardstock, but this is one of those exceptions here, okay? So you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm kind of doing what I do in a lot of my scenes. I'm just kind of creating a, a little bit of a vignette type of effect. It's kind of darker on the outside and lighter in the middle, okay? I won't take this into the scene, or the card, too far. Okay. But four corners especially, and again, don't try to rush this either, that's when it's it becomes a little bit more precarious if you rush it. You know, you don't want to get these, you know, super hard touches like that, okay? Now, if you do get that on this paper, it'll kind of blend out for you, but it's just better to just kind of take it in a nice incremental, uh, kind of a purposeful 
application, okay? It's not rushed and kind of haphazard. The reason I say that is because if you get something like that, you know, in there, and you have to kind of blend it out, it takes longer to blend that out, you know, uh, something like that, than it would, you know, than it would have taken just to apply it kind of in a, you know, a slower uh, pace, okay? And what I mean by that is I'm just not pressing into this, and you don't want to press into these either, because you want them to last a long time, and they will last a very, very long time if you just use them in the uh, prescribed manner, okay? And that's just touching the paper and getting your application of ink and value in terms of light and dark and saturation of the ink with repetition as opposed to pressure, okay? Anyway, so we have something like that, and that'll go in here like that. Oh, let's make this kind of gold paper a little bit more, I don't know, maybe focused and, I don't know, perhaps aged looking. It's just going to be a touch of this gold showing, but let's see if, I don't know, let's see if we can do anything with it, okay? It's kind of like its own little vignette. Um, I'm trying to remember if I remember the name of this gold, and I don't know if I do. The other one was that pet petalics, but um, again, I'll put uh, kind of the, the dimensions and uh, brands of any of these uh, papers uh, in the description below if I have them. Okay. Just going for a slight little kind of wipe there. Do you see that? It's just a very thin streak across. So let me see if I can get it on the bottom as well. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to matter if I uh, things are a little bit uneven. Okay. Because it is just a thin little detail. I don't know, this little card design that I'm doing right now, I mean, I just designed it like in a, I don't know, minute before doing this. Um, I just kind of looked into my scrap paper heap and just kind of pulled out some uh, different, uh, different papers. Okay, let's see how this is going to look here. It's kind of okay, I guess. So the petalics don't get very dark because it's got that iridescent shimmery um, surface to it, so it's kind of, it's a little bit resistant to the ink, but I don't know, it really looks, I don't know, kind of, it has a nice patina, maybe, um, when, uh, when uh, applying ink to it. Okay, um, Let's see here. Let's go with black. This is Marby Black. And let's see. I need to make some room here. I'm not going to have these flourishes kind of going. Um, this is what it looks like. I'm going to have this end kind of going out like that a little bit down this way, okay? Around on the perimeter, again, this whole thing is going to be covered with a card here, so it's not going to be, uh, the center of it's not going to matter you know, one bit, because the whole thing is going to be covered up. Okay, now this will not give me um, a real 100% impression, because again, I'm just stamping onto it with the um, the dye-based ink, so this paper is a little bit resistant to that ink, so I'm going to be getting kind of a lighter impression of it, and again, that's fine. It'll be more of a kind of hint. It does stamp out a little bit darker, but then when it dries, it kind of mellows into it, and it's a little bit lighter, okay? Let's go about right here. 
just like all the other stamping that I do, there's <laughs> there's not going to be any stamp positioning needed. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to. Um, but um, I don't want to. I almost never do. But um, not that I think stamp position is ba are bad. I'm just somewhat of a lazy stamper. And if I don't have to use something, I don't. Sometimes people think that, uh, looking at the scenes, they think I, I do these real complex, you know, kind of tedious arrangements, but it's actually, it's it's the opposite. I, I mean, I hardly use any tools, and you know, my masking materials are like a rip paper towels and things like that. I, I think most stampers, uh, crafters, you know, um, they have a myriad of uh, tools in their, uh, their craft rooms, and uh, they're all really cool, but um, I just don't use too many. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe if I had them I would, but uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't go out of my way to get them. Um, okay, <laughs> that looks kind of cool. Uh, just in terms of a texture, huh? Uh, it's almost a shame it's going to all be covered up, but or most of it is. But uh, anyways, that's the uh, that's what we do. Got to sacrifice some uh, things for the uh, for the card. All right, that's going to go in here like that. Hmm. I don't know, I might want something else in here. This, that external flourish is kind of fancy. And it might not be bad to have something like, you know, some additional flourishes in here. Possibly some texture. Hmm, let's see. It's not always good to do uh, these videos like this, <laughs> you know, where I'm kind of coming up with uh, kind of all the decision making on the fly, but um, I'm generally also not into doing a lot of rehearsals, and I don't want to, uh, I'm not really into doing something and rehearsing it just so, uh, you know, I can come come across a little bit smoother, but because uh, I would just never get around to these videos if I did that. So, um, yeah, that black back there is looking a little bit too plain. I think. Okay, I know what to do. I don't want this to be too busy either. Okay, now I just remembered something that I was thinking about doing anyway. All right. And that's something with the bleed proof white and my, where's my new friend? In terms of a paintbrush application, here we go. Okay, this is a paintbrush, as you can see. But what I was thinking about doing was, um, in another one of the recent videos that I did, was um, I painted on, I. I've been doing a lot of splatter painting types of application with this in uh, previous videos, but um, I am no painter by any means. Um, I really love paintings that other people do and watercolors and things like that, and I really admire uh, brushwork and uh, people's handling of uh, soft media. 
I love uh, things like watercolors and the kind of the spontaneous marks that people achieve from it. And pastels, I love pastel uh, paintings, okay? It's not really painted on with a paintbrush, but, you know, pastels are kind of like a dry paint, so uh, pastels are often, you know, categorized as uh, paintings. But anyways, I love that type of form, but um, I'm not really good at them. Maybe that's why I like them so much, but uh, anyways, I, I tried doing some kind of brushwork on, oops, sorry, a recent scene. I don't want to go looking for it right now, but um, I thought I could handle it a little bit. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to go for some little kind of highlight flourishes on here, okay? With the uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Fruit Flight, the scene, or oh, not scene, see, I'm so used to saying that. This um, butterfly stamped out kind of in a, a lighter shade than, uh, or darker, I should say, shade than white. So I'm going to try it and add some little flourishes on here. You can see a little bit of that opaque white on that line of that uh, butterfly's wing. Let me see. If, let me see if I can get this uh, paint a little bit thinner. Okay, it's a little bit thick and it's not flowing off my brush. Now this paint, you're supposed to kind of just add liquid into it whenever you need it. Okay kind of ends up drying up if you don't use it over time, but it's always good. You want to get it to a nice consistency. It can be quite thin and still be opaque. I, I have no idea what's uh, what this is made out of. I should check to make sure it's not like lead white or something like that, but uh, um, I want it kind of a nice thin consistency, maybe a little bit thinner than like a maple syrup or something. And so it flows nice and smoothly off my brush. And see, I'm always using this kind of pulling motion with it. I feel I can kind of get a little bit more of a controlled mark off of it that way. And hopefully, by doing something like this, um, I'm just going to look for some shapes, I mean, to reiterate some of these marks and to make it a little bit more of a graphic statement. Okay. kind of going along some of these forms like that. Um, <clears throat> you can see it's kind of swiped like that. Looking at it from a distance. I mean, this is, it's not too much different than, you know, when I'm doing highlighting, right? Just imagine, don't think about, you know, don't get caught up in the forms sometimes, okay? Or, or, or on the specifics, okay? Like, oh my gosh, this is a blade of grass or something like that. I could be highlighting this little blade of grass or a tree limb or something like that. But you can see that these different things that, you know, we're kind of doing in these different videos, like highlights, you know, you can apply these same types of things in terms of lighting too. This could be a word stamp right here, and you can be stamping it on something, you know, a darker background, and you can be highlighting some of the word forms, right? In this case, I'm just highlighting some of this, some of these wings, and, you know, it could easily be, you know, uh, a mountain peak or something like that whatever, you know, so all these different concepts, visual concepts, okay, they can be applied to other things, and they're not necessarily specific to just scenic stamping. You know, we're kind of trying to bring some of the viewers' attention, kind of more directed towards the, uh, you know, this uh, butterfly here, so that's why I've added that little vignette around 
um, the uh, you know the background card stock right here, or the background mat. Okay, matting. So if you just kind of look at it in terms of like that, general concepts, all right, rather than specifics like, okay, um, we highlight trees or we highlight limbs, you know, highlighting in anything can be kind of a nice, you know, little addition to just bring a little bit of flourish or dynamic to your different elements. And this is against somewhat of a dark background, okay? So it's really kind of starting to animate it a little bit more, don't you think? It's not so flat, I think, by adding these little very opaque flourishes, okay? Now as I do this, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it, so Again, it's the same type of thing that I do in, you know, scenic stamping piece. I don't add things in too quickly, okay? I just kind of, I start off slowly and I usually work from light colors and work into the darker ones. And I kind of get my, get into a little bit more of a comfort zone that I keep adding a little bit more. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of flourishes over here. All right, let's see if I don't get myself into trouble and start working out of the screen, but let's try to uh, get in here a little bit more because this is getting uh, really fun and I'll, I want to spend a little bit more time with it. And again, I'm, I am no uh, whiz with a brush, so this is all kind of different type of activity for me, but again, I'm trying to stay with my uh, my general concepts on how I generally work. Okay, I work kind of uh, slowly, and then it, I'll get progressively a little bit more gutsy uh, with things. Get a little bit more dimensional as we go. Maybe I can use kind of a dry brush effect. Okay. Something like that from the center. This is becoming way too much fun here. I will try not to spend uh, an hour doing this. But uh, you'll have to forgive me if I do. Okay, see that? Now it's kind of, it looks more dimensional to me um, so far. And there's a lot of different uh, kind of uh, opportunities in here for uh, some really fun little flourishes. Okay, um, let's see. Let's look around in here. So I guess the uh, kind of playing around with this opaque white, 
or bleed proof white in that last um, I think it was two videos ago where I just kind of added uh, some of this bleed proof white on a, uh, a branch uh, ended up being a kind of a nice lesson for me because I haven't really done too much brush work like this before um, I don't know if at all I'm trying to remember if I did that but um, See, I'm kind of doing this little thing where I'm coming around that darker spot right there and kind of, it's kind of coming in right here and I'm kind of feathering it out like that, like where it comes into this area. Again, not because I think, okay, that's what you do. I'm just kind of, you know, that's, that's what I did just now, just kind of experimenting around. Some, some things need to be kind of happening out here, maybe, too, huh? Kind of on the perimeter. See, there's all, all these little design elements kind of right in here. Okay, let's try to add on to those little flourishes in there. All right, I had no idea I was going to be doing all this, but... That's what I always say, you just kind of have to let <laughs> your scenes or pieces kind of go in kind of the direction that they just seem to want to go in. And sometimes it's not necessarily uh, apparent when you start a project, you know. Um, of what's going to, you know, kind of happen. I'm not talking about like in a workshop where you're working through like specific, you know, things to an end goal, but uh, kind of as far as like a development of something or kind of exploration. Okay, I'm getting some more paint out of here. I'm just kind of I'm wiping most of it off as I do this just to kind of have not too much, uh, I don't want it loaded with too much paint when I start um, kind of doing uh, these little effects in here. drier the better. It's kind of like what I do with the uh, with the color box pigment ink, right? It's the same type of concept here, okay? I'm just applying it to a different type of image, okay? But it's the same concept though. So that's what I always say. It's it's kind of, you know, these videos that I'm doing, it's, it's more about the concept than anything I mean, some of them are image specific. This is how this image can be used and whatnot. But in terms of like the techniques and everything like that, they're not so specific to just scenic stamping, okay? Compositional types of uh, elements, textural types of uh, applications, light and shade, whatnot. They can all be universally applied, okay, for different looks, all right. All right, that's looking a little bit better, I think, as we kind of go along. Let's try something. Um, kind of around the, uh, the edges here. There's always something in a question in my mind, as <laughs> there is with everyone, okay? Uh, I don't know if that's going to look good, okay? That goes through my mind as well. 
you know, whenever I'm doing something. I try not to let that stop me though, and figure it out. Just test it out and see if you like it. But that's why I always kind of go with the, you know, kind of like in this case, it's a drier application, okay? Because if I put on a little mark, it's just a little subtle version of kind of the the one that I can end up with. So that's why it's always kind of a little bit drier on here, just like pigment ink uh, applications when I do that on scenes, okay? Now I think that looks good down here. Uh, it makes that bottom part stand out a little bit more, and I think we could probably do it on this other side as well. All right. So it's kind of, I feel like it's like adding shock. I, you can probably do that, you know, that being said, you can probably take a, like a white colored pencil if you think it, you'd have more control over it here on this. And you can probably, you know, it'll probably work. Um, if, you know, you feel kind of more comfortable with that, or if you just don't have this uh, kind of bleed proof white. Not many people do. I mean, it's not something that a lot of people are going to have in their repertoire, um, repertoire, or in their their uh, supply box. Calligraphers tend to use a lot of the uh, the bleed proof white because they do letter lettering. You know, and often when they do reverse lettering, you know, again light on dark. You know, you need something like this bleed proof white to uh, to load up in uh, you know a crow quill pen or a calligraphy nib. If you ever want to see some really amazing work, look up calligraphers. Okay, calligraphers are some amazing artisans, crafters, whatever, but they're also kind of the most, I don't know, they're kind of private about it, you know, they just, they're not really into, uh, uh, they kind of seem to me to, you know, they're, they kind of associate with a lot of other calligraphers, but um, it's kind of like this little underground uh, kind of network of these uh, artisans, and they really have, I don't know, just amazing, amazing technique that they uh, put in their pieces. types of things right here. Okay. All right. Now, let me see here. Um, I think I'm done with that. Okay. Wow. What a change, I think. Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I feel that that looks better to me, you know, <laughs> than before. It's just, it's a lot more dimensional. It, uh, I think that, it, that helped. Okay. Now, one of the things I do, I, I call these symmetry because there's kind of a balance of light and dark in, um, a lot of this type of imagery in this series, okay, but you can see where I have these little um, reversed out marks in here, and there's these little dots, like very subtle little dots, like right in here and in here. And then you see I have the reversed out ones in here. I'm going to do some extra things with this pen here, and I'll see how it looks. This is a white gel pen, okay? And we'll see how this looks, okay? This is a Uniball Signo pen. Okay. You see what I'm doing right here? No. Kind of added this little 
marks right in there. Just as an extra little decorative element. Okay. They kind of stand out, and again, this is, you know, it's similar to the concept, at least, of, you know, the nature scenes, okay? Why is that? It's because I'm just adding these little flourishes, these little highlights that hopefully stand out a bit. I can put one on the antennae, you know, here and there. It's like... Instead of do on a on a leaf, it's just like a little decorative element on a butterfly's wing. Kind of brings it to life a little bit. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, okay. You'll know what I do with uh, a lot of the color box pigment inks, okay, and this gel pen. And I'm doing the same thing here, because I think it just adds in kind of a nice little flourish. In this case, it's more about, instead of highlighting, it's kind of about pattern and decoration, but you can say that achieves that same type of thing in scenic, you know, in scenes, in scenic stamping. But um, just a little bit of a, a different uh, purpose here. Or an altered purpose in terms of like a decorative object. Okay, but it, I don't know. It, it's like these little things are just kind of coming to life a little bit. It doesn't have to be uh, symmetrical from left and right hand side. These wings aren't symmetrical. They're really quite different. Um, from one side to the next. And I did that on purpose, just so there wouldn't be too much redundancy. Okay, all right. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, all right, my gosh. Okay, I say my gosh, because I wasn't planning on uh, spending uh, so much time with that, but that's where it led us, the card led us. All right, now I am still thinking about this perimeter a little bit. I think it could use something, but let's just start to construct this a little bit here. I, I don't. I just use. Uh, I, I just use photo stickers. Um, there's probably other things that are better these days, but I don't know. I still use them tape guns and tape dispensers and whatnot. Those are all great stuff, but um, I don't know. I like the stickers still. Some uh, spray adhesive would be even better, but um, If you're like me, if you don't have to use spray adhesive, um, you don't. I, just, I find that stuff so messy. It's the best results, but um, I don't know. I find it to be a hassle sometimes. It gets all over my arm, even you know when you're spraying it outside, and and I can feel it, like on the hairs of my arm, a lot of times. Okay, so that goes like that. Now, one of the things that I was thinking about doing was um, applying some of those little flourishes onto this card. I wasn't thinking about putting those flourishes, those highlight flourishes, on the butterfly when I started this, but I was thinking, see, I've done these flourishes like this before in 
Uh, not a previous video, but another um, card that I did, and uh, I was thinking this this um, Dr. Martin's would be kind of interesting on those flourishes. Maybe I'll do a couple, okay? And I'll try to stick with that. I'm not going to do a couple and then end up doing, you know, one hour's worth of uh, flourish highlighting, but um, okay, let me see. Get the consistency down. This um, bleed proof white is real chalky, so it it dries fairly quickly, so it started drying on my brush a little bit when I was working on that. Okay, which way do I do this? All right, let's just say that the... Oh, I don't know, there doesn't have to be any to kind of defend... Well, I don't know. I guess the lighting is kind of coming from the center of the card, so let's say that, you know, it, this these little flourishes are going to be somewhat center-lit. I'm not going to stick with that, you know, perfectly, but... Um, We'll kind of go with that as a kind of an initial um, concept or not concept but kind of direction. Okay, you can see what I'm doing right here. Okay, it's kind of making them a little bit more dimensional that way. A lot of these are going to be covered up. You see how much? Okay. I don't want to be spending a lot of time doing, putting, you know, these little highlights on things that I'm going to be just be covering up. So. All right. Uh, if any painter, if any of your painters looking at this. Uh, You know, you'll have to uh, give me a, cut me a little slack in terms of uh, my uh, brush work here. But uh, for me, for my use and purpose right here, it's getting a little bit better. I'm getting that kind of that stroke down without going too far off the uh, cut my intended mark. When I say, hey, for my purposes, uh, good enough. Yeah. Just get in there and do it. You don't want a bunch of like self-conscious marks when you're doing that, uh, doing your work. You want it to be fun and just as free-flowing as you can, you know. Just do it as they say, as the, or as the saying goes, the motto, whatever. Huh, not bad. <laughs> For me, I'm saying, okay. I'm getting more comfortable with the, uh, with that stroke there, see that? Okay. I'd have to say that background sure is fun as far as just a kind of a decorative background. I'll have to think of some other, you know, applications for it. I promise I won't do it in another another instructional video though. But uh, I don't know. Fun. Okay. No, no, no. There's, there's a lot of dimension to it. I'd say more than I thought there could be. Just from these real thin little lines and just a, kind of a one-color vignette background. All right, so anyway, let's 
what we have. You can see it's a little bit more sub. This thing's really shiny, so you can't really see it, but when I go like that, you can see it back there in the corner, right? Well, that's what I see right here, you know, looking at it firsthand, okay? Shiny, more apparent, okay? Same thing down here. Let's get that glare out. So you can kind of see it down there. You can see what it kind of looks like around in there. You can see I, I kind of put the flourishes on the inside of the, uh, or the highlight on the inside of the flourish. All right. So again, you know, I mean, that's not different than, you know, figuring out where your lighting is coming from. Let's say, you know, if it was, if it was in a scene, it could be coming from a sun or a moon. And then just on the sides of the objects facing the, you know, the light, you just put your little highlight on that side. Okay. So you just kind of let that be your, you know, direct your, uh, direct your marks and uh, kind of start from there. All right. Let's see. Oh, see, I already put some of the uh, stickers on this piece of paper, this gold piece, because I knew I would be um, applying them anyway. I don't want to put it on the uh, the piece of paper that I was stamping on, because I didn't, you know, the, even though these photo stickers are very thin, I didn't want there to be kind of an unevenness to this butterfly impression. All right, let's see what we have here. And I'm not going to measure this. I don't know. I might decide which way is top and which way is bottom, then. Let's go with that. And again, I'll put the dimensions of this, uh, of these different components in the description below. You just click that show more um, tab. Okay, we have that. And I have my, this is a, not black, it's a real deep navy blue, like chrome coat paper. All right, you can use black or whatever, um, but this one's so dark it's almost uh, black. But I'm I'll kind of adhere that to this. I, I didn't use a bone, you know, whatever bone bone folder or creaser or whatever those things are. I just I just take that piece of paper and I just kind of fold it over and I just slowly start patting down that edge. Um, to kind of get that crease in there. That's this is a full eight and a half by eleven right here. Okay, so I don't know. One of those little bone things would be. It would be better if I did it, but uh, oh, I just didn't take the time to uh, to do that. Okay, let's see. I'll go for nine, which should, should be sufficient. Okay. If I did this uh, butterfly before, well, I guess I'll find out because I usually put links to it off of the uh, the modules, stamp modules on the website. But um, I know, sometimes my memory doesn't extend back farther than you know the last scene that I did. Well, not really, but I don't know if I did something like two years ago. I, a lot of times I just don't remember. But I know I haven't done something like this before, not with those little flourishes. Okay, let's see, that's, okay, there. So anyways, the butterfly is a little bit of a departure from scenic stamping, but it is part of the Stampscape's line of images. It's kind of a different look. Um, let's see, I do think that
I was just about to add some little white little details in there, but we have that gold um, little matting on there. And it's the only place where there's some gold, so gold pen, right? Just realize that I had that. And let's add in some little... What these are, I don't know. Um, I mean, they're dots, but... Just kind of adds in another element. Right? Just like kind of stars in my scenes or little reflections or crepuscular light. Not crepuscular light, specular light, sorry. That I add in my scenes, why not do some of this in this um, image? Just to kind of create, oh, I don't know, a little bit of a added pattern or texture, which is what, you know, we're doing in scenes. It's a little bit of pattern and texture in those in scenes. It often represents lighting or highlights on objects, but what they do is it adds continuity, which this can do as well. And just kind of visual interest to an otherwise, you know, maybe slightly plain areas within a given space. So, okay. Now, what I'm thinking about right now is, you know, these little kind of flourishes right in here with that dry brushed kind of a bleed proof white um, touch. I think that that could be easily applied to, like, say, the top of a rock or something like that. Instead of a couple dots, you have kind of this feathering little highlight area, okay? And that could be applied. So I always try to, I don't know, I'm always trying to, you know, think of other things that I could do to a scene to uh, kind of make, you know, the techniques that I tend to use more effective or kind of to, I don't know, just to further kind of explore it somewhat. So I think that something like this card right here, you know, I've learned something from it in terms of that. I don't know, I mean, it, we'll have to use it in a, in a scene to see how it will come out, but um, I don't know, I think that could work and I think that could be kind of effective in terms of a, a nice little flourish or highlight on various elements within a scene, okay? Maybe around the sun or something like that. It could be kind of a flaring out a little bit from the center, emanating. All right, now I'm adding some of these little gold highlights into this matte background just to kind of create a little bit of a continuity, color continuity between what's going on in here and the matting. I'm taking it out to this perimeter um, mat in terms of having these little golden little flourishes, okay? It's, it's very subtle because when I do this little gold dot in this perimeter area, it's 
it's almost the exact <laughs> it's it's strange no matter where I put it on this uh, background it it seems to kind of be the same exact value of wherever I put it in the lighter area or in the darker area I guess in the lighter area I don't know maybe because it's reflecting a little bit of light coming from above here but when I put this in the darker area you can't see it at all until you kind of capture you know some of that um, light you know reflective light off of the uh, you know this metallic ink so it's very subtle but again this is one of those types of things where you know let's say if you're giving this card away the recipient of your card will get it and hopefully they kind of receive it and then they're generally looking at it as an overall but then they have other areas to explore kind of um, afterwards you know they might look at it closer up you know in terms of some of the details and things like these little gold flourishes let me see if I get some of that light I don't know if you can see it but kind of they're all throughout here you can see a slight yellowish tinge to it and again it kind of relates to that kind of iridescent uh, um, paper surface of the uh, metallics okay so anyway kind of a fun card uh, it's a little bit of a different look for me <laughs> because it's of a different uh, type of uh, content even though the symmetry sheets are a part of the stampscapes line but um, anyways I had fun with it I had a lot of fun adding kind of these little flourishes in this butterfly down here I, I really like this background um, patina you know this it, I don't know it looks antique to me and adding those little flourishes on there those little white little ones like that kind of added to it but again when you look at it from you know like, like a distance like this it's you know it's very subtle so it, I don't know it looks like tin plate or something like that or um, you know some of those uh, kind of a uh, ornamental uh, like ceiling and wall types of a uh, plates that you put in there uh, you know to a home um, I don't know it's kind of reminiscent of that to me so anyway um, hmm. no idea what the title for this one's going to be but uh, I don't know just butterfly hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed stamping it um, it's I, this took a while to do because I was kind of I don't know, figuring out what to do along the way, but just stamping that in white ink and just kind of going in there and putting on these little flourishes. I mean, you can do that with a uh, colored pencil too, um, perhaps if your colored pencils are nice and sharp and your paper is um, has enough tooth to it, you can probably do the same type of thing that I did with the Bleed Proof White and a paintbrush with, you know, colored pencil or something like that. Or you can also color in this butterfly a little bit too, you know, in some of that black area. You know, that might look kind of cool with some, you know, little flourishes. I have these, like the silver. Oh gosh, I didn't want to keep going on and on here, but um, yeah, okay, it does show up. I don't want to do too much, but here's the silver. Um, pencil and I've just very lightly added some of that in there and it goes on there just fine so I, I this black paper was not a glossy paper it's matte black okay but um, this will go on just fine I mean the silver is going on so the white would go I don't have a white um, pencil in front of me but uh, Oh, gray or something like that or colors you know you can I don't know do butterfly colors on here or do some kind of interesting type of thing in here but um, I don't just going in here what I was getting at is going in here and adding this whole flourishes shouldn't take too long and you know that was one stamp of the background like that just stamp several times in black all right and just going on with that little bit of flourish you know that little patina around the edge I think is really effective and that's just going on with your sponging effects and going on to the uh, the background and you know kind of creating a little bit of a vignette with that I think it looks a little bit more antiqued by kind of doing that on the corners just like I do on you know on scenes you know we just make the edges kind of darker 
That one's not really a great example of that, but you know, you can see something like this. It's just darker on the edges, right? Well, that's what I'm doing right here, okay? And we have a lot of these little <clears throat> highlights, little flourishes in there, and that's what often happens in some different scenes that I do. Here's the uh, um, Star Wars scene, and you can see all these little colored dots that were applied in here. I think I actually used some of that gold one as well. Little highlights around in here, and there's certainly a, I don't know, not highlights or stars, but I don't know, they could represent stars, but they're more just decorative little elements, okay? So, that being said, very similar types of techniques being applied to a scene like this as there are in, you know, the scenes that we do. So, um, you know, see so these uh, different lessons in terms of concepts and uh, try to think of some different applications as to where, you know, these types of things can be applied. These little flourishes or have these little highlights on it. And let's see here. I found it quickly, okay? So this branch in here has these little highlights like that, right? The light is coming from over here in the background. We have the highlights on these sides of these branches facing the light. Same type of thing going on right here, okay? So the concepts are all the same. The applications are the same. Techniques are the same. Just working around a different kind of whimsical image here in this case as opposed to kind of natural elements. I mean, I don't know, butterfly can be nature, but it's not really done in a very realistic manner, okay? It's very stylized, but you can apply the same types of techniques with it and be equally as effective for your different usages. A lot of these techniques in here would be really fantastic with um, word stamps and just kind of stamping your, your word stamps in there and highlighting them, you know, with some little bit of a, you know, gel pen ink or something like the bleed proof white if you want to go for some really super fine little touches like that. All right, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the scene, uh, scene card, and uh, thanks as always for watching.